This is my 2020 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon in Gobi as we enter Land of Memories Park in southern Minnesota on a snowy February morning, 2020. I originally planned to film this yesterday when the roads were dry and I could wash the Gladiator and get it here in pristine condition. However, when I noticed the weather forecast calling for a winter storm, I thought, what a cool way to showcase the Gladiator. So I waited a day. Officially, we got 11 and a half inches of fresh snow last night, and it is covering a sheet of ice that is left over from a previous snowfall and subsequent partial thaw. While 11 and a half inches isn't a lot of snow for the Gladiator, the underlying ice presents a unique driving experience. As expected, the Gladiator is taking it in stride. Our morning of filming presented a few challenges. While we dressed for the cold, by the time we were done, we felt a little chilled from standing out in the cold while filming. Then we were interrupted when a train went by during filming. And finally, you may hear some snowplows beeping when they were backing up. Sound carries far in the valley. Although this is my daily drive and it is currently in stock form, I am so looking forward to building and getting my Jeep equipped for overlanding. Jeep says that the Gladiator Rubicon is, quote, the most off-road capable mid-size pickup ever. And that's the main reason why I bought it. It's such a practical vehicle for its combined off-road and on-road mission. And who can deny its rugged looks? After all, the Gladiator is a Jeep and a truck, hence the term Jeep truck or JT. Hello everyone, Mike here from Mike Overlanding with an exterior walk around of my Jeep Gladiator Rubicon. A big thank you to my wife Jane for coming out here and filming this on this very, very wintry day. <laughs> no problem. What do you think of the Jeep? Oh, I can't believe how it drives. I mean, it, my little car would have been stuck long ago and this just flies. Your Jeep Renegade, yep. Yeah. We saw many cars in the ditch on the way here. Uh, we had to rescue our son too. Rocket. There we go. You got it. Woo! Yay! Fresh snow that fell last night and uh, perfect Jeep country. Yeah, it was really fun. There are a number of features that make the Jeep Gladiator an off road beast compared to other mid sized trucks. Ground clearance. The Jeep Gladiator stock boasts an approach angle of 43.3 degrees, a breakover angle of 20.3 degrees, and a departure angle of 26 degrees. The overall ground clearance is 11.1 .1 inches. Now I know this isn't the lowest point on the Jeep, but just as a point of reference, it's about 19 inches to the bottom of the skid plate. The lowest point in the Jeep is probably the differential. There are some skid plate underneath that are low as well. The water fording depth is 30 inches and I've got my hand at the top of the 30 inch mark right here. And as you can see, uh, if you were going through water, it's going to get inside the Jeep in here because the, the crack of the uh, door will allow water in. So in my opinion, in an emergency situation, it's great to know you can do this, but is it something I want to get water in inside the interior of my Jeep right away? Not really. Let me show you the front of the Jeep as well. The 30 inches comes up to the top of the bumper. No, not even. And uh, again, it's uh, 30 inches at five miles per hour. You go faster than that, you're gonna create kind of a, a wake in front of you and it's gonna get in the engine, it's gonna get in the air intake and you're gonna have trouble. So, um, but it is nice to know that, you know, Worst case scenario, flooding or mudslide or something, I can get out uh, up to 30 inches of water. The color of this Gladiator is called Gobi. And it's my guess is that because it's a tannish type color, it is named after the Gobi Desert. Um, it's really unique as far as the color. At, at times it's a tan, at other times it shows a, a light green in it. Um, so it's, it's truly a unique color. And one of the things I like about this color is the way it offsets with the black. Um, we've got black fenders, 
black wheel. Well, that's actually called crystal something. It's kind of a grayish, charcoal gray is what I would call it. But these wheels are perfect. I was so glad that I got these wheels out of all the choices they had. I know everybody likes different things, but this, this one was perfect for me. All-terrain tires. Of course, the interior is black, so when I take the doors off in the summer, that helps accent, keeps it the two basic colors. And the, the other part that's black is the spray and bed liner. I did get it with the spray and bed liner and that helps offset it. I will tell you, I've owned it for a month, I think the month today, and the compliments I get. I get people at work. I had a guy say, I only like black or white vehicles and this is the exception. Um, so I'm getting a lot of good compliments on it. You will get stares from people driving the Gladiator around. It does it attract quite a bit of attention. Okay, first of all, we're gonna talk about the front of the Jeep. First thing you probably are gonna notice is I did not get the steel bumper, I went with the plastic bumper. I did that for a couple reasons. One is I've never had a need for a steel bumper and I know I could get one on the aftermarket should that day come when I want a winch or a steel bumper or if I'm gonna do some more technical courses. So the plastic was good for me, also the cost. Why pay for it if I didn't think I needed it, knowing that I can get one later. Uh, the front uh, tow hooks here, wonderful. I'm hoping that uh, I'm helping other people get out of trouble and it's not going to be me, but um, my guess is maybe a little of both. Did get the LED lights. I had a Jeep Wrangler JL and they lit up the night wonderfully and so does this. There's a, they put out a lot of light and they're, they're, the, they're all, all around the whole Jeep. Everything has the, uh, the LED lights. The uh, air vents are larger than in the Wrangler. And the reason for that is, of course, get more air in there. This has a larger towing capacity, so you wanna keep your engine cool. And the last thing that I think is really cool is the front trail cam here that is visible from in the inside of the Jeep on the display. Uh, when you're going over a hill and you can't see because your, your, your hood is in the way, um, this will allow you, me, to see the trail ahead of me and make sure I'm staying on the trail and not heading off in the, in the wrong direction. The other cool thing about this is that it has a washer in it. So if you've got mud or debris kit, you can push the button and it'll shoot some washer up there and clean it off for you. The Gladiator comes with steel rock rails to cover the cab of the Jeep. They also did something pretty neat was they put one underneath the bed as well. So great idea for the Jeep. You know, this is an off-road vehicle. You do want to protect the back end of the Jeep going over obstacles. I did get the plastic fender flares, and the reason I went with the plastic fender flares is the painted ones, I thought, are more prone to show pinstriping or scratching, and I do plan to go on trails with this, and I'm hoping that this will either show the scratches less or not even scratch at all, or both. So that's what I went with that. I also think that the colors offset well. Of course, Jeep went with the Fox 2.0 shocks, which you can see here. I went with the 33 inch all-terrain tires. There was another option, more of an off-road tire, but I, this is my daily drive and um, I do need to get to the destination before I go off-roading. So uh, to me, the, the all-terrain tires made more sense. And of course, today they've proven themselves. The wheels are granite crystal. That's the color of the wheel. And again, I really like the way this offsets uh, on the Jeep. Remote proximity entry. I love this feature. <laughs> you can hear a train in the background. I have my keys in my pocket. <laughs> and all I need to do is if I get near the door, either of these front doors, I just push this button as long as the keys in my pocket and the door is unlocked. It is awesome. Same thing when I leave the Jeep. If I haven't locked it, I, I'm outside, I push it again and it locks. Really, really slick. You'll notice the Gladiator does have the tow package right here and it does have hookups for the umbilicals. Also in the back, just like in the front, there are two tow hooks. Hopefully I don't use them that much. And finally, the, uh, the spare tire is underneath the Jeep. And I think that's a great idea. It lowers the center of gravity of the Jeep and uh, gets it out of the way. Um, the downside of that, of course, is that if you're in mud or you're hung up on something and you've got a flat tire, 
you're going to have some trouble getting your spare tire out. But otherwise, I think it's a good idea. The Gladiator has a rear backup camera right here. And the neat thing about this is not only is it very, very clear, but it also has a zoom feature. So if you're trying to hook up to a trailer, you can not have to get in and out of the Jeep all the time. You can just look at it through your display on the dash and you can see as you're, as you're bringing the Jeep into the, in the docking station on your whatever trailer you're, you're bringing in. Also, it has a uh, three position uh, tailgate. Of course, one is closed, two is open, and as you may have noticed, there was a soft open there as well. The third position is kind of a halfway position. To me, it kind of keeps things from rolling out if you've got something you want to put in here and it's too big to close and you don't want the tailgate all the way down is you simply lift the tailgate up and hook this cord behind and you do the same on the other side and you've got a halfway position. The Gladiator comes with a five foot bed which has a 1,250 pound payload capacity. The bed is made of steel, however the tailgate is aluminum. I think the best of both worlds, you've got a light tailgate to move and you've got the strength of steel in the bed. And as you can see, the bed has a spray in liner. The bed of the Jeep has a 115 volt outlet right here. The cover to the outlet is plastic. I'm not sure why Jeep didn't go with steel or aluminum cover. We'll see how long this lasts. There are two integrated lights in the back of the bed. Here's one and the other one is on the opposite end here. I did some testing and the lights do not go on when the tailgate is opened or closed. Not sure why that is. I wish that they would go on for at least a brief period of time when the tailgate is either opened or closed. They do go on when the doors of the, the side doors of the Jeep are open. Um, if you open the door and leave it open, it'll stay on for 10 minutes and 15 seconds I, I timed. Um, however, uh, if you open and close a door, the lights go off after about 30 seconds uh, from when the door is closed. The Jeep Gladiator does come with a rear window you open it from the inside of the Jeep. You'll notice I did bring my trusty Max tracks on a day like this. Uh, thank goodness the Jeep didn't need them, but we did end up rescuing at least one other driver uh, with these. And I actually have, I've never used these before, but I still have some of their tire. I don't think you see that on the Max tracks from today. And finally, for the back, uh, you'll notice I did not get the, uh, the tonneau cover. I do want to get a tonneau cover but I want to get a tunnel cover that will also work with a bed rack because ideally I want to put a rooftop tent on the top of this. So until I find a manufacturer that makes a quality for bed rack and a tunnel cover combination, um, I'm going to hold off for that for a little bit. The other real cool thing about a Jeep Gladiator is that it is a convertible. First of all, the windshield folds down. It comes with a neat little tool kit that allows you to unscrew a few bolts and lay the windshield down. These on the hood here are designed so that the windshield lays on it and doesn't scratch the windshield or, or the, the hood. The next thing is, is that this is called the Freedom Panel and there's one over the driver and one over the front passenger. They come out real easy. You just reach up and you just flip a couple switches, push it up and it comes right off. It's so slick. Of course, here's the regular part of the roof. Uh, again, this toolkit is used to take off, and disconnect the roof from the Jeep. You easily disconnect the umbilical because there is a uh, rear window defroster here, and you can lift this Jeep off, the Jeep top off. I have heard that one person can do this. Now, I had a Jeep Wrangler JL, and it took two people. My son and I would take it off. You, one person couldn't do it. What I'm told, and I haven't checked it out yet, I'll do that in the summer, is that you open up the rear window after you've disconnected everything and you stick your arm in there and you can lift it up. So I'm looking forward to giving that a try so I can kind of do this all by myself. Um, one other thing I wanted to show you is that the Freedom Panels can be stowed away in this neat bag that Jeep gives you. Um, keeps the mud out, dirt, debris, whatever. They also have this little pouch in here with two of these rubber I don't know pads and what these are for is that when you take the rear of the Jeep off and you set it on the ground you you slide this into the into the bottom of the 
of the top so that it doesn't scratch it and doesn't damage your top. So that's it. It's convertible. It's awesome. Thank you. Okay, another thing that Jeep did, which is really awesome, is they made a place for you to put the bolts that you take off when you remove the, the, the top or the doors. I'll show you. You simply lift this seat up here, and right here is a convenient place to store all of your bolts. They won't move around, you won't lose them. Uh, great idea for Jeep. Thanks for watching, and I hope this was helpful.